Hello, my name is Josephine Fernandez, and I'll be presenting my capstone project, Expanding the Teleaudiology Model, an Interdisciplinary Team Approach, for Praise of Spring 2022. I presented a version of this presentation at the Ohio Academy of Audiology Conference this past fall, and I liked to open up the conversation with viewers by first asking what their experience in telehealth has been so far. This allowed me to gather a starting point on their thoughts, opinions, and involvement in telehealth, and specifically teleaudiology. As we know, the onset of the COVID-19 pandemic has made it crucial for patients to be seen via telehealth for various reasons. Many of those being minimal access to facilities that would grant them care, additionally lack of transportation, lack of medical specialists, and of course, cost. Knowing that these issues are all potential barriers to patients, the College of Allied Health Sciences interdisciplinary team, Team Mexico, has made it our goal to make audiology appointments, amongst others, including follow-up and remote hearing aid fittings to be scheduled via video conferencing platforms to allow patients to seek the medical attention they need from their home or from satellite facilities. I personally have been a part of this team since 2019, and since the onset of COVID, we have organized appointments with patients in Mexico via telehealth in association with the Palace Foundation nonprofit organization. Our team recently expanded our model by involving medical residents in Mexico to synchronously run the appointment while also providing on-site medical expertise. In January 2022, we took a pilot team consisting of three audiology doctoral students to Cancun, myself included, accompanied by one audiology faculty and one physical therapy faculty. The team served as a pilot group for UC's international faculty-led study abroad programs in a three-day study abroad experience. Together with three medical residents and 10 volunteers and leaders of the Palace Foundation, the team provided a total of 132 evaluations and treatment. Included in that breakdown are 108 hearing evaluations and 24 PT evaluations, as well as 23 hearing aids also donated for future patients. A subset of the patients received both audiological as well as PT care within that same appointment. The addition of the medical residents to the team effort has been crucial in the expansion of the teleaudiology model. With their help, on-site as well as follow-up care has been enhanced by providing culturally competent and holistic care while also acting as translators when necessary. Medical students in Mexico are required to perform a year of social service in addition to six years of studies as well as residency as part of their graduation requirement. Each year, the Palace Foundation welcomes medical residents to serve members of their community. Medical residents collaborating with the Palace Foundation learn how to complete hearing screenings, hearing aid listening checks, and hearing aid adjustments. Since we have left Cancun, the medical residents have performed diagnostic audiometry exams and participated on the teleaudiology calls taking place weekly. Our team will take another trip at the end of April through the first week of May to Cancun. It will be the largest audiology team that the University of Cincinnati has ever taken, and we will collaborate with the same medical residents that served this past January. In May, we plan to offer an additional layer to our interdisciplinary care. Vestibular screenings and at-home exercises will be administered to patients in a joint effort by the audiology and PT students. Vestibular care is the other half of the audiology scope of practice 
involving perception of body position and balance. Here is also a portion of the handout that I've created following CDC recommendations. The plan is for the medical residents to assist with this care as well. Of course, there are strengths and limitations to the expansion of the teleaudiology model. Strengths included increased access to audiology care for patients in rural areas, the minimization of transportation and travel limitations, enhancement of patient safety due to effective COVID protocols, efficient and present communication with patients, synchronous medical advising and counseling by the residents, and the ability for frequent and thorough follow-up appointments. Some limitations included internet connectivity issues, the occasional miscommunication related to the use of masks, verification within the fitting, this specifically lies in the idea that real ear measures were not possible due to the lack of equipment that we were able to transport to Mexico. Instead, we often used indirect assessments to validate patients' perception of benefit. Examples of these included hand claps and other transient noises to verify maximum power output and subjective screening measures such as asking the patient their tinnitus bothersome level and overall comfortability level on a scale of 1 to 10. Lastly, a limitation we were not able to see until later, but the medical residents were unable to write formal prescriptions. For example, we saw many cases of ear infections that required drops and the medical residents were unable to formally write the prescriptions. Instead, they had to advise the patient to seek out that medical treatment, and ultimately it's unknown if the medical issue was ever resolved. As to provide a big picture reference, audiology is still a fairly new and recent field in Mexico. Compared to the audiology scope of practice in the United States, in Mexico, the scope is broader, involving medical treatment of hearing disorders with additional otology training. Additionally, they focus their care towards more holistic communication, involving training on practices in speech, such as lip reading and the treatment of articulation deficits. In the United States, audiology scope of practice involves treatment, and assessment of vestibular disorders, cochlear implants, and education for hearing conservation, which is all not yet included in the scope of practice in Mexico. Overall, our team believes that the expanded teleaudiology model has proven effective in realizing holistic and continuous care for the patients served. This can be seen by an emphasis on follow-up treatment, provision of on-site medical counseling, culturally competent care, and the opportunity to learn by audiology doctoral students and medical residents. Here are my references, and just an acknowledgement, Team Mexico would like to sincerely thank the Fundacion Palace team and the Palace Resorts personnel as well as the Chapura family for welcoming the students and the faculty of UC to Mexico. It's truly a great honor to serve with them as they pursue their mission to help others. Thank you for listening to my presentation.